Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakai, Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at the Great Millstone. Salutations, peace, and blessings to the hopefully elect out there listening and learning. Laboring in the truth and all diligence, righteousness, and sincerity until we are redeemed from our captivity. So back in the news with some more heavy things that are coming. And as the prophets have been telling you, we're in some dangerous times. The scriptures tell, uh, told you that we're in some dangerous times. See, what's coming on the earth, a lot of people ain't even ready for because they have no idea. They ain't been watching, they ain't been preparing. They haven't been doing nothing but being in this world, involving themselves in all kind of vanity, all kind of wickedness and perversion meanwhile evils are growing in the earth and the scriptures also say that evils and only evils is come so when you know we are in evil times which when you go into that word evil it goes into bad times inflation is about to hit these people hard Job loss is already at an all-time high. People can't get jobs that are looking for them. The uh, American infrastructure is being attacked, you see. So what's being set up before you is a chaotic scenario to bring in a new order. And we all should know what that new order entails. Because at this point, it's pretty much obvious. But the squeeze is on from all directions. The farmers, they being squeezed, they being put out of business. Small business owners, they are being put out of business. You know, people are just catching hell 360 degrees. Everywhere you look, people are suffering, people are mourning, complaining. And this is a sign to let you know that this society is on the way out. Because nobody's happy no more. No one can confidently say that they believe in the American dream, that they see this place going on for another 20 to 50 years. And if they do say that, clearly they out the loop. Clearly they not paying attention and watching what's going on. They lost in the sauce they damn self. Because you would have to be out of your mind at this point in the game to even believe that wholeheartedly. This ain't the America of the 80s and the 90s and the 50s, like the golden era of America. Them, them days is long gone and it ain't coming back. What's happening, what, you know, what you've been seeing is a progressive decline of America. A progressive decline, even more so rapidly now, of the Western world. And this is all to usher in the end of this kingdom that is ruled by the Edomites, the so-called European, the Caucasian. Because their kingdom is on the way out and the kingdom of Yasha'ala, the Israelites, is about to come up. So we're going to check this video out. I got three lined up with some precepts as well. And we're going to break it down, man, because look, you should know well what times that we in, you know. The things that we constantly bring out, this is to edify the hopefully elect so that you may, you know, examine yourself and really assess where you stand. If you stand with your Habashim Yamashai or if you stand with this world, because as we always tell you, if you stand with this world, the only thing that's going to happen that, 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 that's going to come from trusting in this world is being destroyed. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be in a pitiful, sorrowful case. So without further ado, let's check this out. Hey, what's up guys? TikTok just sent me a notification said if I get one more strike, they're gonna permanently ban me off TikTok. It is what it is, fuck it. The ship that hit that bridge got something to do with the Fed, the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve just came out the other day and said that inflation is pretty much like they, they've lost the, the, the fight with inflation. So shit is gonna get more expensive and I guarantee you, with that ship hitting that bridge, it got something to do with the, uh, the hyperinflation that's on the way. Shit's going to go extremely expensive, and they want to make sure they keep the, the attention off of what the federalist government, which is 
the federal government is doing, which is blowing all the money, spending all the money, and, de and devaluing the dollar. They, 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 they know it's crashing, and that fucking ship that hit that bridge was a deflection, and they're going to try to blame that shit on the, uh, on the bridge and the ship for the reason why a, a gallon of milk is going to be fucking $10, and a, bread, a, 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 a loaf of bread is going to be fucking uh, $7, and gas maybe, I don't know, who knows, but that's the reason why the bridge, why the ship hit the bridge. Let's get it. And yeah, that Baltimore Bridge, the Francis Scott Key, that's a major port on the East Coast that was crucial for receiving and also shipping out a lot of goods uh, from the Port of Baltimore and also from neighboring states. So now that that bridge has been destroyed, which is pretty much already came out, those that are in the know, we know even from when the reports first came out that that was a black swan event. That was an inside job. Okay. But the aftermath of that is going to be, of course, job loss, a lack of resources coming in, you see. All across the board, farming is going to be hit. Food is going to get more expensive because there's going to be less of it. And uh, in that report that came out about the bridge, one of the main things that was noted with that uh, was that uh, the Francis Scott Key Bridge was crucial for importing uh farming equipment and of course we know without the farmers a nation can't exist farming is crucial to any society because of course you have to feed your population for it to grow you see but without the farmers societies collapse and that's actively what we see is uh being designed okay for this place to be collapsed but they must attack the food you know this is an ancient tactic you know, ancient warfare, which is a siege. All right, pretty much lock the people inside the city. They can't come out. They can't forage for food, you know. So it's either going to be one or two things. Either they're going to starve out and die, or they're going to get so hungry and desperate to the point where they surrender and accept whatever terms that you want them to accept. So this is what the elites are moving into. See, they're putting the squeeze on you know they're putting the squeeze the uh the siege on the american people so that they can accept the solution that they want to bring this is ezekiel 4 and 16 it says moreover he said unto me son of man behold i will break the staff of bread in jerusalem and they shall eat bread by weight and with care and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment and yes this did happen in the ancient world but this is about to come back again today because there, there is going to be famines everywhere. It's not just going to be in one part of the earth, no. Because right now you do have famines going on in certain parts of the earth. In certain parts of Africa you have famines going on. In Gaza there's a famine. All right, And in different other uh, so-called Middle Eastern or Western Asian nations you have famine that's happening. Because of what? Because of wild weather events, you know, of course, the uh, uh, the farmers are not being allowed to produce. And ultimately, it's all the judgment of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. But the point is, we're coming into a time where, because right now, food is abundant in Babylon the Great. Food is abundant in the Western world. Food is so abundant that people throw food away. You see? But we're coming into the times where people wouldn't dare even think about throwing no food away because they're going to understand that that's going to be the last that they're going to have. And that there is going to be no uh, food to just go and just buy at your at your own convenience. No, we're coming into a time of scarcity and lack. And in a time of scarcity and lack, just think about the Great Depression. When you go back to the days of the Great Depression, do, do you think people was throwing away food back then? People was not throwing away food back in the days of the Great Depression. No, people was, uh, you know, savoring every morsel of food that they had because they understood that there was no more food coming in. Whatever they had for that day or for that week, they regarded that food with the utmost care. See, that's why it says that they shall eat bread by weight and with care. 
You see, so you're not going <laughs> to, you know, even uh, the crumbs that fall off of the piece of bread that you're going to break, you're going to eat that. You're going to cherish that. And ultimately, this is all to what? This is to humble these people, man, because the people here in Babylon the Great, they proud as hell. All right? They never thought this day would come. They never thought that they would be in any sort of lack because in times past, uh, prosperity was abundant in Babylon the Great. As long as you could work or you had a certain type of mindset, you could get some money and you could be all right. Well, now we're coming into the time where if you don't have your how about Shemel Shai, your ass going to suffer. See, that's the time we're coming into now. But the men of the Lord and the few sincere Aqua, the sisters that uh, believe upon this truth, the Lord going to take care of us because we fear the Lord. See, this, the, you, see you have to understand, these plagues are coming for those that do not fear Yahweh Bashem Shai. These plagues are coming to afflict and punish the proud. All right. Hunger is here to punish those that are proud and lofty. And the scriptures say what about being proud and lofty? That all those that are proud and lofty shall be brought low in the day of destruction. This is what is upon us. You see? And they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. See, so look, you're going to be, these people are going to be astonished when they wake up. And as it says in 2 Ezra 6 and 24, the full storehouses shall suddenly, suddenly be found empty. So you're going to wake up one day, and, and this is mainly going to be because people was not paying attention to the signs of the times. They're going to wake up one morning, go to the store, and it's going to be scarcity in these stores. You see? You're going to go to buy a case of water, and it ain't going to be there. You, 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 uh, you're going to go to the bread aisle. And you're going to try to get some bread. It ain't going to be there. These are the times that we're coming into. A time of famine, scarcity, lack, fear, civil unrest. Because once there is no food, and if you do go to the market and, and see that there's some food, guess what? The price is going to be so high to where you can't afford it like like uh, like uh, this guy said. You know? We, we, you know, we're coming in, into the times of hyperinflation. Where you're going to go to the market and you're going to be paying $10 for a gallon of milk. You're going to be paying $7 and up for a damn loaf of bread. These things now, if you was to mention this to the average person, is like, nah, no way. There's no way that milk could ever be $10. But see, the Lord about to shock these people. The Lord about to bring these people into the real reality of what's about to happen. You know, because the things that the scriptures speak of, people have never seen before. Just like at the time of Noah, when Noah was speaking of a flood to come, people never seen that. People never seen water fall from the sky. But when it happened, what? They were all astonished. <laughs> you see that? So look, the Lord about to perform a great work in Babylon the Great, man. You see? And all those that, 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 are, that are wicked, you despise the ways of Yahweh Bashmiel Shai. You despise the prophet. You despise the word. Your own judgment is going to be upon you because you chose not to fear of the Lord. <clears throat> and you're supposed to fear the Lord because you understand what he's capable of doing. You understand this is the same power that brought down the superpower of ancient Egypt. This is the same power that brought down the superpower of Rome, of uh, uh, ancient Babylon. Assyria, the Persians, and the Medes, the ancient Greeks. All these kingdoms were uh, 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 set up and they were brought down by Yahweh Bashmiel Shai at their appointed time. So if he can do that, what can he do to you? <laughs> oh, man. You know, but speaking of water, speaking of water, let's go here. Because, you know, reports have been coming out crazy for the past couple weeks that a cyber attack well there there have been cyber attacks on the water system you see there 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 already are ongoing cyber attacks on the water but it's about to get even worse all right because we about to come into a time where uh water is about to be a precious commodity you know right now people waste water you know people got water you know to um uh, water their 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 lawns and you know wash their car with, you know pe you know you know people don't really regard water because it's so abundant, 
but when we come into the time of uh, scarcity, when there is no water, when you can't just turn on the faucet and see clean water uh, coming out or just turn on the faucet and you can take a shower, what is that going to do to people's psyche? Well, it's going to bug these people out because they, number one, never expected something like this to happen in a uh, you know, first world nation like America. And it's also going, going to bug them out because they've never uh, experienced nothing like that. You know, they're going to be astonished. They're, they're, they're going to marvel at these things. But nonetheless, the Lord is bringing it. Okay, these are the plagues that are coming to afflict the wicked. Let's check this out. The White House is warning governors across the country to beef up their cybersecurity after hackers recently attacked several cities' water systems. Joining I think a lot of people have seen Leave the World Behind. It lays out some of these concerns if a lot of these systems were attacked, our critical infrastructure systems, and we didn't know that. We lost communications type of things. How big of a risk is this? How likely of a risk is this? Are these systems? Are we doing enough to protect ourselves? We need to do more. Is Roger Kohler, Chief Information Security Officer at Huntress. Roger, thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. So hacking incidents at water facilities, how vulnerable are they? And what is the concern here? Is it about the drinking water itself? Yeah, absolutely. There's a uh, Department of Homeland Security actually set up a uh, uh, agency, a uh, cyber security and infrastructure security agency, uh, many years ago to kind of go after some of these things with the critical infrastructure. And water is one of those things that they've uh, uh, really kind of looked at. And as you know, in Detroit, there's a lot of issues in 2014 with billing and all sorts of issues. And so this is really where a lot of these systems have uh, uh, bridged their information technology networks with their operational technology. And it's not only the water that's being attacked, it's also the electrical grid. They've been talking about hitting all these things, and guess what? At some point, it's going to happen because they've already showed you these things in the in the, the movies. You know, in that in that movie, Leave the World Behind, it was what a whole East Coast blackout from the Northeast to the Southeast. The whole of the East Coast was dark. Okay, and we also know that this eclipse coming up. That they're preparing for something you know they they've already been telling you in uh reports and articles that during this eclipse um cell phone outages are going to occur that the national guard is going to be deployed you know potential cyber attacks could be going on <laughs> you know the the uh elites of the world they're going into the bunkers for this event so we know that something is about to pop off okay we don't know what it is but we are in those times where you can't leave nothing off the table. And even more so because they've been openly showing you, okay? They've been revealing the method unto you, you know, in these different, um, uh, you know, films and TV shows and things of that nature. So we are not to be ignorant of Satan's devices because we know that this devil is, is up to something. You know, we don't know exactly quite what it is, but... Engage in the scriptures, knowing that we're in the midst of perilous times. We we already know that the worst case scenario is upon us. Think like billing with uh, how you how you control it, so you can measure and build those things, and that's really opened up a lot of vulnerabilities where uh, uh, they're really concerned about right now. In some of those recent hacking incidents, what happened there? Was the water contaminated, or what kinds of attacks exactly were they? Yeah, at this point, there's there's been no damage, anything that's been uh, uh, really critical. But these are uh, very simple attacks that have occurred. Like if you go look at the announcement that DHS CISA did put out, uh, some of these things just within the last couple of years uh, have been about uh, advanced Chinese backed uh, hackers, uh, as well as uh, Iranian hackers that have uh, done things as simple as using basic passwords. Uh, uh, because some of these places, just like what we see at Huntress when we target, uh, when we look at our SMB market, small and medium sized companies, uh, they're under resourced. Uh, and so that's where we're trying to help them out with uh, basic security and advanced security in some of these places. Ezekiel 7. In 25, destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Verse 26, mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then they shall seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priests, and counsel from the ancients. So, mischief is coming upon mischief, and who's bringing this mischief? Ultimately, 
it's Esau, which is the left hand of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. See, understanding that Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is in control of all things, he controls the right and the left. So the Lord is using his sword, his whipping stick, which is that of Esau, Edom, to bring this hell upon the earth because he's the wicked. This is what he was created to do. He was created to bring mischief upon the earth. He was created to sow discord and confusion. He was created to never stop deceiving. This is what his main objective is, to cause hell on the earth. And it says that in 2 um, Salakia, Habakkuk 2 and verse 5, that his desire is as hell. Matter of fact, let me just let me just get it real quick. I don't even want to butcher it. Bear with me one moment. Let's go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter two. In verse five, it says, "Yeah, also because he transgresses by wine, that wine goes into his wicked philosophies, his his uh, lifestyle, right? He is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home who enlargeth." His desire is hell. So the scriptures say that the wicked, which is Esau, Edom, that he enlarged his desire as hell and is as death. We, of course, we we've we have seen throughout the annals of history that wherever the so-called white man has gone, death follows him. What happened when he came to the Americas? Death. What happened when he went to the Far East? Death. What happened when he went to Australia? Death. What happened when he got up into Europe? Death. <laughs> you see, so this man is as death. Whenever the so-called white man shows up, things start to die. Okay? Why? Why? You see, why do you think that certain species of animal no longer exists? That's directly due to the rule of the so-called white man. There was no such thing as animal extinction. There was no such thing as Air pollution, water pollution, water scarcity, lack of resources before the so-called white man showed up. These things were not even a thought, but now they're, they're a reality because the devil is in charge, you see, and cannot be satisfied. See, so you would think Esau, he got control over the whole earth. He got all the resources, right? He got the fatness of the earth. You would think this man would be satisfied, but he's not satisfied. He always wants more. But gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. And, and, and how has he done this? He has done this by the way of America, Babylon the Great. This place is known as what? The Great Melting Pot, where you can find all nations of people under one roof, if you will. And he's also attempting to gather all people unto himself by bringing about this Salakia beast system. All right, in which everyone's going to be on a grid. They're going to be tracked. They're going to be traced. They're going to have a certain number and they're going to have to take a certain device. Okay, That's how he's going to gather all nations unto himself. This man is, is the devil. Okay, and, and they're talking about uh, these cyber attacks are going to be performed by China, by Iran. But really, we know that this is going to come from uh, the WEF. Okay, this, 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 this thing here is an inside job, man. All right. This is an inside job. But of course, like they always do, they they uh, manufacture a chaotic situation. Then they blame it on their enemies. So then they can justify going going to war against their enemies because, oh, now, oh, Russia is the boogeyman. Oh, uh, Iran is the boogeyman. They're attacking our uh, uh, infrastructure. You know, they're performing cyber attacks on us. So we must go to war to defend our national interests. This is the calling, you know, this is uh, uh, the cat call, okay, for America to, to get into these different conflicts. But we see through this devil, all right? We see through what Esau Edom is doing. We know this man's playbook. We study this man and we know his history. He can't get away from being the devil, man. You see, this is what he was put on the earth to do. And call her Lord Yahweh Shai that we have not been deceived by this man's smooth words, by his uh, uh, deceptive uh, tongue. Okay? We see right through this man. 
Let's go here to Proverbs 10 and 32. It says, a matter of fact, let me start at 29. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. Who are the workers of iniquity? The main workers of iniquity that are pushing policies, that are pushing death all around the planet Earth, is Esau, Edom, and the other nations that are joined unto him. Verse 30, the righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the forward tongue shall be cut off. Verse 32, the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. Now, what does it mean to be forward? To be forward means to be a person that is difficult to deal with. Contrary. You see that? So who is contrary to Yahweh Bashmir was shy? What man is hard to deal with? It's Esau. Okay, just like Cain, right? The Lord told Cain and Abel the right sacrifice that he wanted them to offer unto him. Abel gave the righteous sacrifice. Cain gave the, a wicked sacrifice. Cain brought uh, the vegetables from the earth to sacrifice unto Yahweh Shai. Until Yahweh Bashem was shy, a bloodless sacrifice. Now it's not that Cain didn't know what was right. Cain knew just like Abel knew, but see, Cain was forward. Okay, he was stubbornly disobedient. He was contrary. You see, and Cain is the spiritual forefather of Esau Edom. Basically, Esau is Cain after the flood, just to make it simple. But this man is is you know speaking nothing but forwardness. And you can see it in his works. He can't be no different. He he can't repent. This is who he is. <laughs> All right. The proof is in the pudding. Let's move on here to this last one. Okay. Because again, this, this goes into the policies of Esau Edom. Because they want to tank America. They want people to cause so much hell to where there's a civil war. You know, he's, he's also going to release... Uh, disease X and, and keep in mind that all these things that are happening this is really the wrath of Yahweh Bashmiel Washai but again he's using Esau to do it we, you know that is crucial to understand because if, if, if you understand where it's coming from <laughs> then you understand how to avoid it okay which uh, in order to escape the judgment that's, that's coming you must be in the good graces of Yahweh Bashmiel Washai and that's what the men of the Lord have been telling you OK, yes, we understand evil is coming. Yes, we understand that, that all kind of chaos and madness is about to occur. But the way to escape is to hide yourself in the strong tower, which is the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, where you can be kept safe. Carnality guns and, and, and storing up food is not going to save you. OK, that's going to be a liability unto you if, if you don't fear the Lord. All right. So we, you know, we are in those times, man, and we can't say it enough that uh, <laughs> this place is, is uh, on its way out. This world is done. But this, this policy, this law that has been implemented in New York is pretty much uh, given these migrants that have come over, over the border. It's given them rights to basically take over people's homes. So, for example... If you was to go on vacation, you was to go on vacation for two weeks and your house is vacant, but, but it's, but it's locked up, you know, it's a uh, uh, secure, right? If, uh, some squatters wanted to break into your house and, and decide that, uh, Hey, this is, this is our home now. <laughs> okay. You've been gone for, for X amount of time. So hey, we thought that it was vacant and, uh, the law says that we can do this. And they've also been given rights to carry firearms. They've actually been given guns and things of that nature to, quote unquote, defend themselves. So you can't tell me, come on, man, you can't tell me that these things are not deliberately being set up to cause some sort of a purge like scenario. This is exactly what's going on. And it's amazing in this day and age, in this time, as crazy as it is. You still got Jakes at the game scene. You still got Jakes out here that are on another planet, man. <laughs>
But it's all good because guess what? They about to be brought back to planet Earth. Okay, they're about to be brought back to reality. And 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 you know, their their uh shame is gonna be upon them. Okay, once these things occur. But yeah, the, you know, these are the wild policies that are being set up by the powers that be. So let's check this out. But what do you think about this? Is he wrong for abusing squatters' rights and taking over homes owned by American citizens? Comment your opinion on the situation down below. A Venezuelan migrant is attempting to invade American homes using squatters' rights. Mi gente, he pensado invadir una casa en Junay State. Ya que me enteré que existe una ley que dice que si una casa no está habitada, podemos expropiarla. So he's inciting other migrants to basically take over people's homes. <laughs> And uh, it was in Michigan, I think, that uh, the mayor of, of, of Michigan actually uh, told Michigan residents to open up their homes to house these migrants, you know, to just clear out a room, you know, clear out the basement so that these people can stay in these people's houses, you know, not knowing what kind of intentions that they have, um, not knowing if they carry some sort of disease or if they have ill intentions, period. But this is what's being called for. And now the laws in New York have been opened up to where this is actually being done. So, look, man. We are, you know, we are in the midst of, of perilous times. Okay, where a lot of death is about to occur. Speaks about that second air just five. Many shall be taken in a, in, a, in a great number. You know, death is about to envelop the earth. You're already seeing it. You know, but it's about to get to another level. You know, and, and the point is that America is pretty much done. You know, uh, there is no bringing this place back. There is no, uh, let's try and fix this place, you know. Hopefully, you know, Trump gets back in there and America can be fixed. No, nah, see, that whole rallying cry, the campaign of Make America Great Again, that was done back even when Trump was running in, in, in uh, 2016. You know, that was really a, a vain imagination <laughs> because it's not the Lord's will that America be brought back. So America has pretty much been through for a minute, you know, but it's it's really to the point now where this, this place is on the brink of collapse and uh, the leaders of this place are accelerating that process. The Venezuelan migrant claims that his friends have already taken over seven homes and is encouraging other migrants to do the same. Amigos africanos, y me dijeron que ya llevan como siete casas. The Venezuelan migrant claims that the only way him and his fellow migrants can escape living on the streets is by invading unoccupied homes. La única manera que tenemos para no vivir en la calle y no ser una carga pública. But what do you think about this? And so you got to keep in mind, they still bringing these migrants over the border, or should I say so-called migrants, you know, because a lot of them are paid mercenaries, military aged men that have uh, sinister intentions. You know, they, they've been paid to uh, complete a certain task. But what do you think is going to happen when these shelters are overrun? Well, pretty much right now, they are overrun. There's not enough space to house all these people coming into America, especially in these sanctuary cities. Chicago is through. New York is through. L.A. is through. So where are these people going to go? Well, they going to come to your house. All right. And guess what? They they not going to come knocking. They're not going to ask you politely. Uh, Do you think that we can, you know, stay in your? No, they, they going to come in there by force. <laughs> you see and guess what the law protects them in in doing so the police is actively being defunded in all these states so when these migrants do come and do what they're going to do you're not going to be able to call 911 
there is going to be no law enforcement because at that time, the law is not going to exist. <laughs> the law in America is, is going to be null and void. So when there is no law, what happens? Anarchy, chaos, confusion. This is what is being manufactured by the elites. Hosea 4 and verse 2, it says, By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out in blood touches blood. Verse 3, Therefore, therefore shall the land mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Okay, so we're in that time, brothers and sisters, where the only option is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. <laughs> you know, that's the only option. That's the only way out. Because again, the Lord is bringing it. You know, and uh, knowing knowing the name, you know, calling upon the names of Yahweh, okay, which means He is or He exists. Why Yahweh Shai? He is salvation or He is the Savior. It's only one name that you can call on to be safe. You're not going to call on God. Which God are you calling on? Okay, God is not the name of the creator of the heavens and the earth, of, of the whole universe. All right? God in, in, in Jesus Christ is not going to save you in these times, man. All right, that's why it's important to know the name and have faith in that name. You see? Because when worse come to worse and all hell breaks loose, the carnal thing that you trusted in in this world, the police trusting in, uh, you know, swords, weapons, things of that nature, it ain't going to do you no good. It's all, you know, those things are going to aid in your own downfall. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out here. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying to the Rakaq Kedash and close and call her law. Yahweh Bashim Yahushua Bashim Rakaq Kedash. And until next time, Lord willing, Shalom to the elect.